Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and mercy of Allah and the blessings be upon you all. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim We seek refuge with Allah from shaitan the rejected one. Bismillahir rahman rahim With the name, the description, the attributes of Allah the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, the most gracious, the most merciful, the universally merciful, and the specifically merciful. In alhamdulillah, ahmaduhu wa astaqinuhu wa astaqiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shur Shururi and Fus na Wamen Shayat Ati Wa Amami Lima Men Hahdihi Wallahu Men Yahdihi Lahu Fala Mahdi La Lahu Wamen Yadlil Fala Hadiya Lahu Wa Ashahadu Allah Illaha Wa Ashahadu La Sharika Lahu Wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Surely the blessings, surely the praise belongs to Allah. It is His. We seek His help and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one, having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wasallam is his servant and messenger. Ya ayyuha ladina aminu taqu laha haqqa. Yutakihi wala tamutuna ila wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah correctly as he should be feared, and do not die except that you are Muslims. Akaulu kali hadha wa astagfiru laha wa laqum. I say these words of mine and I ask Allah for forgiveness for myself and for you. We thank Allah for this day of Juma, this Friday. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week. We thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude to him 
for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, and we pray that others are guided to this mercy and blessing as well. Today, I wanted to discuss grief and sorrow and how we are to cope with difficulty. One of the words used in the Quran for grief is asifa, meaning to be sad, to grieve, or to be afflicted with. The other word is hazana, to be sad or to grieve. In the examples that I'll be giving today, most of them have this word hazana. The Quran is replete with Allah strengthening and encouraging our Prophet وسلم, after trying times. Suratul Khawfa is an uplifting of our Prophet after his sons return to Allah and his enemies mocking him. When our Prophet is in doubt about his mission, Allah sends Jibril, the angel Jibril, to reassure him that he is not mad, that he is a man chosen by God a man who will hold the weight of the world on his shoulders. Whether we see this as literal or figurative, as he is the mercy of the worlds, as Imam Muhammad would say, to all the systems of knowledge. But he's a mercy to all the worlds. Yet Abdullah ibn al-Hari said that he never saw anyone smile more than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He had the weight of the world on his shoulders, but he smiled all the time. But he took his grief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as his haq, Isaac, did and said in the Quran, Qala innama ashku bati wa hazni illallah. Isaac, when talking about Yusuf, who was put into slavery, he said, I only complain of my suffering and my grief to Allah. After the battle of Uhud, where many Muslim fighters and the Prophet himself was wounded, this verse was revealed, Speaking to the Prophet, Allah is saying, do not grieve for those who race to disbelief. Surely they will not harm Allah in the least, in any way. Here Allah is counseling Muhammad, telling him not to be disheartened by those who rush to disbelief. Let us remember that these words are coming out of the mouth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but they are helping him, strengthening him, and counseling him, comforting him. The Prophet is concerned that people's disbelief may possibly affect Allah. But Allah assures him, and through him he assures us, that they can't harm Allah at all. They are totally and completely unable to hinder, hurt, or harm Allah in any way. This is why after the Adhan, after we say Hayya Allah Salah and Hayya Allah Falah, we ask people to come to their success, come to prayer. But we say after that, Allahu Akbar, meaning that whether they come to prayer, whether they come to their success or not, Allah is still the greatest. And we end with La ilaha illallah, that He is still God, the one God, whether you come to pray or not. And let us remember that the Quran is a healing. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is our example. So when we can recite these words, it can help calm us and calm our grievances and our grieving, just as it did the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam. Again, after the battle of Uhud, these words were revealed. Wasbir wa ma sabrul sabruka illa billahi wa la tanza ta Again, to the Prophet, it is saying, be patient. 
for your patience is, is only with Allah's help. Do not grieve. Do not be distressed by their schemes, by the disbelievers' schemes. Allah assures the prophet of his help. His aid and his assistance will come with Allah's, when Allah gives him patience. And we all need Allah to give us patience in our lives. And Allah tells the prophet, and he is telling us to calm, to stay calm, and do not grieve over the schemes of those who are enemies. Allah plans, Allah's plan will always prevail. Audhu billah. We seek refuge in Allah. We not just have to say this, we have to internalize it and believe it with our own selves, our whole selves. Because when Allah is with us, it does not matter who is against us. We may feel sorrow when we are trying to invite others to this way of life called El Islam. And if they reject it, we may sometimes feel grieved. And if you're like me, you want everyone to get this blessing, a part of this blessing that we are receiving. And this is exactly how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam was. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Wasallam said, my example and the example of the people is that of a man who made a fire and the fire provides light and moths and other insects start to fall into the fire. And the man tries his best to prevent them from falling into the fire. But they overpower him and rush into the fire. And in the middle of this hadith, when, Allah, when the prophet is talking, he starts to get a little personal because it changes from an imagery to himself speaking. He says, now I take hold of the knots on their waist, like their belts, to prevent them from falling in. But you insist on falling in. This is what he says. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is clearly distressed by people's insistence and their persistence in pursuing their own doom and their own demise. This is never more evident than today when truth has no bearing on people's acceptance. Something that is true is not enough. No one can accept truth, can comprehend truth, or even consider truth without Allah's permission. Allah says in the Quran, Wa idha qila lahumu tabi'u ma anzala anzala lahu qalu bel nata bi'u ma wajadna alayhi wa aba when it is said to them, follow what Allah has revealed, they will reply, no, we only follow what we found our forefathers practicing. But those who disbelieve, do not let their disbelief grieve you. Again, Allah is counseling the Prophet, and through the Prophet counseling us, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a warner, not a guardian, and we are warners to those who are on the wrong path, and we are bearers of glad tidings and good news to those who are in pursuit of the Surat al-Mustaqim, the straight path. Allah informs the Prophet, and through him informs us that no one can be guided without Allah's help. Even amongst those who you love the most, they are guided by Allah's will and their willingness to accept guidance. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. The praise again belongs to Allah. 
and may his blessings and peace be upon the Prophet and upon his family and upon the Sahaba, Sahaba and upon the believers, those who have returned to Allah, those who are living and those who are yet to be born. The fact is that before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam began to preach the message of Allah, all the people regarded him as truthful and trustworthy. Only after he began to give his message, the people call him a liar, call him deceitful. Even during the period, even during that period, they never dare call the prophet or said he was lying of something that was of personal matters. Even his worst enemies never accused him of lying about worldly affairs. Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance, for example, is one of his staunchest enemies. And Abu Jahl once said to the prophet, we do not disbelieve you. We disbelieve your message as if that is something different. You, we disbelieve the words that are coming out of your mouth. To this, Allah says, or reveals this in the Quran. He says, Qad nahlamu innahu ayahzunuka ladi, ladi, yakuluna fa innahum la yakatibu naqa walakina lidhalimina bi ayatillahi yajhadun. Allah says, We certainly know that what they say grieves you. This is Allah talking to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We certainly know that what they say grieves you, but it is not your honesty that they are questioning. It is the signs of Allah that the wrongdoers deny. We have all been in a position or situation where someone accuses us, accuses us of being dishonest or slanders us in some way. It hurts us, it grieves us, it saddens us. Well, the most truthful man on the face of the earth was called a liar. Do you know how difficult it is to tell the truth about everything at all times in all situations? He took great pains throughout his life to tell what they call the God's honest truth every time under every circumstance, whether it helped him or harmed him, and they call him a liar. And he gave them a revelation, and he was commanded to speak, and what he was commanded to say was, I have been chosen by the God of the universe to declare to you, to convey to you, la ilaha illallah, that there is no God but Allah to people who believed in 360 gods. So they were bound to reject him, to ignore him, to belittle him, to slander him, to attack him, or to persecute him. And he, like any other human being, felt hurt, felt pain, felt grief from their rejection. Allah had to remind him that you are not the first messenger or the first prophet to be rejected. Other prophets and messengers felt grief and sadness, but they persevered and waited for Allah's help. And that is what we should do. Seek Allah's help and guidance. And that is what we ask for repeatedly, at least 17 times a day. In Al-Fatiha, we ask Allah for Allah's aid and for his guidance. Do you all remember what happened to the man who Allah says, when he used that word, Asifa, when he said, Allah said, this man was worried and grieving so much, almost to the point of death, about what the disbelievers felt. You remember what happened to him when he was in a cave for three days, hiding from the Meccans who were seeking to kill him. They wanted him dead for saying nothing more than there is no God but Allah. And while the Meccans were outside of the cave, wondering if he was inside, what was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing? Remember, this is the same man who was grieving that their slanders hurt him. The same man that was grieving that their disbelievers, the disbelievers and the disbelief might affect Allah. The same man that was grieving that their schemes might catch up to him. 
Well, while he was in the cave, Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr seems to be afraid or nervous or apprehensive that they may capture the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And guess what our Prophet said? He said, "La yazan inna Allah ma'ana." Do not grieve. Indeed, Allah is with us. The hadith reads that he said further, he said, O oh Abu Bakr, what do you think about the two with Allah as the third? Allah was certainly with them. So the one who was seeking Allah is now the teacher, is now the comforter. The one who had to be counseled by Allah is now doing the counseling. He has overcome his grief, so he is well equipped to help others. Insha'Allah, we will learn from our teacher and learn from our Lord how to overcome grief and sadness, and maybe one day we'll be able to help others. Allah says in the Quran, "Alla inna awliya liya Allahi la kawfan alayhim wa la hum." Yeah, Zanu. I like this translation because it has a word that I never considered for Allah Inna. It says, unquestionably, without question, for the allies of Allah, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Without question. Let that, let that all resonate to ourselves, and we go to our teacher, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu wa sallam, go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our grief, for our sadness, for those who wish to do ill to us, who seek schemes and schisms to harm us, for he is our protection. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adaba in nur. Our Lord give us good in this world and in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Him is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya la salam, hayya la salam. Tadakama fi salat, tadakama fi salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadan Rasulullah. Allah Akbar. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi al-Alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawm ad-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Walad-dalim Ameen Kul ayyuhal kafirun La abidu ma ta'budun Walla antum abiduna ma abud Walla anna abiduna ma abatum Walla antum abiduna ma abud Lakum dinukum waliya deen Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu lami hamida Allahu Akbar Allah Akbar. 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 Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din 
إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ إِهْدِنَا صِرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ آمِينَ إِذَا جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتَى وَأَرَأَيْتَ النَّسَبَ يَرْكُنُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَزْوَاجًا فَسَبِّ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Al-Fatiha Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki yawmiddin Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-Mustaqim سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. All right, brothers and sisters, do not forget your zakat obligations. Excuse me. If and we have been receiving zakat obligations, so so alhamdulillah. If you want to mail the zakat obligations in, mail them to six one one four West Thirty Fifth Street. Norfolk, Virginia, 23508, or to the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 1802, Norfolk, Virginia, 23501. There's a couple other things I wanted to mention. There'll be a free turkey or chicken and with fresh vegetables given away this Saturday for families who have fallen on hard, hard times or are in need of food for the holiday season. You are invited to stay in your cars and ride up to... Um, Cascade Central Park lot is 1060 Cascade Boulevard, Chesapeake Boulevard. And that is Saturday, this Saturday, December 19th, from 12 to 2 p.m. You can get a free turkey or chicken and you get free vegetables. If you have any questions, contact Brother Ali Salam, Ali Salam at 757-646-9799. Also, there will be a call to prayer for what is seen in the Western society or what is seen as New Year's or New Year's Eve community prayer. It's under Zoom. If you, um, how you can register is, if you reach out to me, I'll find out how you can register to Zoom, and it's, but it's for, uh, for December 30, 31st. We'll have some more information on it in the, in the upcoming weeks. Assalamu alaikum.